Hi there, and welcome back to the Sticks Plus Twine podcast. This is episode 33, which as of the moment remains titleless because there's been so much going on since I recorded last time that I don't even know what to call this. So let's just call this the unnamed episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and for all of my uh, existing and current viewers. Thank you so much for returning and sticking with me while I took a bit of an extended holiday. And to all of the new viewers who have just joined and have been sending such beautiful, kind messages of how much they enjoy the podcast. Thank you so much for joining. If you are a newer viewer and you're kind of wondering, hmm, where has he been for a while? Well, I'm going to tell you in Knitter's World. But um, short version is I've been on holiday for, oh, I was on holiday almost four weeks and um, we'll talk all about where I went and what I did. Um, But I've been, but I'm back. I've been back for a couple of weeks, but it's been just as busy the last couple of weeks. So lots to talk about today. What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about the um, knit along that's going on right now, which is a tweed grows in Brooklyn. We're going to talk about status report. We're going to talk about knitters world. We're going to talk about the haul. Yes, even though I've been away, there is a haul, which it's funny. I thought it wasn't going to be that big, but by the time I sort of gathered everything in one place, it's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. Um, And then I'm going to talk about one more thing. So let's come back and talk a little bit about our Cal. Before we start talking about the Cal, I wanted to say, first of all, thank you so much to Natalie at uh, Remembrances Pottery, who put away this amazing mug for me that I picked up last weekend. It is Grello socks. Perfect for me. Yes, I think so. I'm just having coffee today. It's a little hot, so I have to let it cool down a bit. Um, But, um, okay, where are we gonna start? Let's talk about our Tweed Grows in Brooklyn. So um, for anyone who's new or isn't aware, we have a knit along running in the group and there's some great, amazing prizes that are gonna be given away. Um, basically it's a Brooklyn Tweed knit along. So you can enter by using a Brooklyn Tweed pattern, a Brooklyn Tweed yarn, or a pattern by Michelle Wong for Brooklyn Tweed. Um, and any combination of those three will give you up to three entries per finished object. So what does that look like? For instance, I'm doing the Red Mirror Cardigan by Michelle Wong, which was part of her capsule collection for Brooklyn Tweed, and I'm doing it out of Brooklyn Tweed yarn. That means I have three entries. If you were to do the Rad Mirror in a different um, yarn, you would still get two entries because it's a Brooklyn Tweed pattern and it's Michelle Wong. If you were to do a non-Brooklyn Tweed pattern, not by Michelle Wong, but use a Brooklyn Tweed yarn, that's one entry. So it kind of makes sense. Um, So we're going to the end of June. There's gonna be some great prizes. First prize, I'm gonna recap because it's been a while. Uh, Michelle Wong will give a um, signed autographed copy of her capsule collection, which will go directly to you. Um, Second prize is a $25 gift card from Brooklyn Tweed, which you can spend on whatever you like. And I'm looking at the third one. The third one is a pattern of your choice, um, not a collection, a single pattern of your choice. But I wanted to say there's one more prize that just came in that I'm so excited to share with you. So. If you are familiar at all with Knit Gizmo, who is Jeska, I think I'm saying that right, Jeska from um, Knit Gizmo, has donated a couple of really gorgeous prizes. And she sent one to me actually and and one for you. And I'm gonna show them to you now. They are project bags, but they are not any old project bags. They're project bags that are made with Harris Tweed. They've got brilliant linings. There's the Harris Tweed logo. Um, This one has a lining which is a map of London, and this one has scissors, and again there's the Harris Tweed um, label, that's what I meant to say, label not logo. Um, I'm just in awe of these, and one is going to be staying with me, and one is going to be going to a winner. So how could you win the bag? And I haven't decided which one it's going to be yet, but I think this will probably be the winner. But I like both, I don't know, but I'm kind of thinking this one might be mine. Um, if you win and you really desperately want this one and not this one, I'm more than open to, to swapping that out. So basically it's going to be winner's choice. How are you going to win? You're going to win by participating in the chatter thread. This will be a random draw in the chatter thread. The more you chat, the more it's going to be. This is not going to be a number um, like, oh, it's number 1642. I'm just going to literally scroll through and just go blink that person. 
um, because I really, really love how much you guys are participating in the chatter thread. And if you don't finish, that's okay. Honestly, it's just for participation. So this could not be, I think, the nicest prize. It couldn't be a nicer prize. It is, I think, one of the nicest prizes that's ever been donated to the podcast. And like I said, it's going to be winner's choice. I love them. I love this fabric. It's just, it's just so awesome. Anyway, that's the new one. So thank you so much to Nick Gizmo. Check out the Etsy shop. I believe it's Nick Gizmo Makes. I'll put a link below here. So that's it for the knit along. Let's come back and talk about status report. Got a lot to talk about there. Okay, so time for status report. Got a lot to talk about. First, I want to talk about a finished object that I forgot to share on a previous podcast because I was actually using it at the time. What that is, is the Church Mouse, um, I believe it's the XXX Anniversary Tea Cozy, and it's super stretchy. So bear with me while I talk about it, while I try and squeeze it onto my teapot without uh, making too much noise. But um, it is knit in uh, Volun Vine Yarns in the Cocoon Base, which is a... Oh, sorry, I'm going to make noise here. I'm afraid it's going to distract you. There we go. It's on. That's what it looks like. With its cute little I-cord top, it's got stretch, it's got a nice little cable detail around it. This is for their anniversary um, that was designed. It's a quick and easy little knit. Literally, it's two panels, knit side by side, bunch of decreases at the top, join them together, just knit a little um, I-cord top onto it, and that's it. And it works. It works really well. And this is great. This is BFL, um, the yarn. Kristen, sorry, I can't remember if it's Aaron or Worsted. I think it's sort of in between, but it's beautiful. I absolutely love this yarn. It was good. This is in the harpsichord colorway, which um, Kristen died for me because I was so in love with it. And then she said, hey, I know you like BFL. Would you like to try this base? So um, I don't know how much of this she has in stock or if she's going to stock it continuously, but I absolutely love this. You could use it with whatever yarn obviously you want. So I'm going to put this down. Careful. Ah, quiet. Good. Um, so that's one that I had forgotten to show you. Um, I am wearing my void shawl today. No, not for any particular reason other than I felt like wearing a little bit of softness. It is uh, me made May if people are following that. I'm not particularly following it myself, but I have sort of tried to use and wear my, my finished objects a little bit more this month. So hopefully you are as well. So let's talk about another finished object. I have two more to share. See what happens when I go away for a bit. I get some finished objects done. So this one is the Busta Beanie by Gudrun Johnson. This is this year's Shetland Wool Week free pattern. It's a free download from their website and it is color work. Um, now I'm going to hold it up so you can see that there are different colors in there. And if the eagle eyed amongst you see any errors, in it, I know, there's probably a couple of boo-boos in there. Frankly, I don't care. It's for me. And so I made sort of the cardinal rule mistake of color work, stranded color work, which was I put two colors that were very, very close together and they look, they look very dissimilar in the ball, but their tonal quality is very, very similar and that's the blue and the green. So it's a much more subtle pattern than you would see on some of the other examples if you look on Ravelry, that sort of thing. But I actually quite like it. I like the color combinations. And so I was doing this primarily because I love the pattern, but I also wanted something that was relatively straightforward to continue to practice doing color work. And this is a great pattern for that because it's very, very, very straightforward. Um, this is knit in Jameson and Smith two-ply jumper weight. Um, I'll put the colors in the show notes below so you can just look down. Um, so I need to knit these on, um, what did I do these on? These were on Haya Haya circulars, um, just like from my hat stash when I stocked up on a whole bunch of hat needles. Um, so, so that's what that's done. But the floats were pretty good. I, I think I did a pretty good job. I'm going to turn it inside out because you can actually see the colors even more vibrantly there. So that's the inside. This has been blocked, but it's been sitting around sort of flat for a while. But here's the thing, guys, I'm kind of stupid sometimes. Um, for some reason, I don't know why I thought it would be a good idea to break the yarn for every color change instead of just carrying the floats up the back. So I had to do some weaving in and then I got bored of weaving in. So I said, you know what? 
it's for me. It's color work. It's already two layers of, of yarn. I'm just going to tie knots, cut them close. It's a done deal. So that's what I did for some of them, because frankly, I just got bored. I'd finished this on the ship. Uh, we'll talk about that in this world, but I was on a cruise ship for a while. So I need a haircut desperately, which to anybody who has long hair would say, oh God, no, you don't. But anyone who shaves their head or cuts really, really close, you'll know what I mean. So this is what it looks like. Let me get it on first. Don't, don't go all crazy on me. There we go. Here's the problem with me with wearing glasses. I always have to flip up the ribbing just a little bit. So that's what it looks like. Um, I'm really, really liking it. It's, um, it's snug, it's got a great amount of negative ease, which I'm happy about, and, um, and it's really warm, and I'm in love with Jameson and Smith because of it. So there you go. Um, I will be making another one of these. I do have some, some haul that I will share with you, because um, I'm going to make one for my mother-in-law. She doesn't speak English and doesn't watch this podcast, so she won't know what's coming, but I will. There you go. Boost a beanie, number two. Number three... Uh, let's come back and talk about that for a second. Let's look at number four, and then we'll come back to movie. So, this is the Radmir cardigan, which I am, um, I talked about earlier in the Brooklyn Tweed, um, cowl that we're running. So, the Radmir is the, um, very, very heavily cabled men's cardigan by Michelle Wong for Brooklyn Tweed for the, uh, her capsule collection. I took a sleeve with me on holiday, and it's in a Ziploc bag. Not in a project bag, I'll tell you why. Cruises are humid places. You're, usually, you're at sea level all the time, and when it gets warm, you get humidity. And I didn't want humidity to start affecting the yarn or being able to work with it and all that sort of stuff. So I put everything in Ziploc bags to keep it safe. It also kept it clean while I was packing. If anyone went rummaging around in my suitcase in security, which sometimes they do, I thought, okay, I'm going to not worry about it. So, what's in this bag? First, a notebook where I wrote out every single row because I wanted to make sure that I didn't miss an increase row when I was supposed to, because of course on sleeves you have to increase out. Um, I also have the pattern. The pattern on this one is a little bit easier than the back. I'm not done the back, I'm just saying I'm, I had to swap out for a smaller piece. So it's got the chart, which has its little highlighter tape, and there's more charts. There's a lot of charts <laughs> in this pattern. But you know what? It's Michelle, and I adore Michelle, so I'm good with it. I bought way more yarn than I thought I would ever actually go through, but I didn't want to run short. I did not go through half the yarn that I brought with me because, well, I'm on holiday. Um, and I want to do other stuff than just knitting. Surprise, right? Um, so let's show you where am I. It's all kind of stuck together. There we go. There is the sleeve to where I am done at this point. You can see it is, as I said, extremely heavily cabled. There are no rest rows whatsoever. Both front and back are, um, you have to pay attention, which is great because I love a good challenging knit and this is going to be my um, one of hopefully at least two Rhinebeck sweaters this year. But I, I'm in love, love, love with this color. I'm in love with the pattern. Um, I can't say enough about it, but it's honestly one of the nicest things that I think I've ever knit on. Um, and I take no credit, obviously, because I'm just the, I'm just the hands doing the work. Um, I didn't design or anything else. So, um, what are these on? These are on my Addy needles. They're nice and beautiful. We've talked about those. Not much more to say there, because I didn't really get much progress done on the trip. I literally didn't take it out of the bag, other than to show it off to some people, and I'll talk about that. In Knitter's World. Okay. So, another finished object is the one I'm going to show you now. So, those of you who have been watching for a while know that um, in sort of almost a year ago, um, Devin of the Handmade in Woolen podcast and I started a men's knitting magazine called Rib Magazine. And since that time, we brought in a number of other people into the team, including Jenny, who is Devin's wife who is our associate editor on RIB, as well as my friend Ramona, who does tech editing. and whole, it's, It takes a village, you know, to, to raise a magazine. One of the best parts about working on the magazine, though, is that we get to select the patterns for um, all, from all the submissions for each issue. So issue number two is called Navigate. I'm going to talk about this a little bit more at the end, but I did get the chance 
to do, and I want to make sure I show the right sides of these, a test net for the magazine, which I could not be happier about. Um, I saw this pattern when it was submitted and immediately knew that I wanted to make this. And it is the Fickle Steps Socks by Louise Tilbrook, who is, of course, very well known for her outstanding sock patterns and designs. And you can read more about the story about this on um, the website ribmag.com. But, of course, I have a finished pair because I did one on the ship and I did one when I got home which I couldn't be happy for. These are actually gonna to go to Sebastian because I have been promising him a pair of socks forever. These have not actually been blocked, they're just on the blockers because I wanted to show them to you and they really need, because of this pattern, you really need to open them up to see. It's all twisted rib all the way down the leg. If there's this beautiful, um, it is a cable, it's not a faux cable, it actually is a cabled stitch, but there's a little twist to it and it just makes it amazing to work on. This goes so fast. It looks complex. It is not complex. It's actually really, the pattern's very, very, very potato chippy. Um, and I loved doing them. I actually think I'll probably make a couple of pairs of these because I love them so much. So what is the yarn? The yarn is a new base by Julie Aslan, um, the wonderful Canadian dyer who's based in Quebec. And this is her new Nomad base. And the Nomad base, it's a, um, I believe it's 80-20. I may have talked about this before, but I don't remember, but I believe it's 80-20. And this is in the flannel color, which is French for flannel. Um, love them. This is exactly the same yarn that the um, samples that Louise did for us for the magazine was done in as well. And oh, guys, it's, it is a high twist yarn. It has amazing relief. It shows off texture like crazy. Um, I'm in love with it. I want to make all the things. I convinced a couple of people last weekend to buy some. Um, the Purple Pearl here in Toronto carries it. And uh, if I didn't already have a billion skeins of sock yarn, and I have a few more sitting here to show you in the haul, um, I'd probably be getting these again. So, brilliant, brilliant pattern. Um, it is available in Rib Magazine issue number two, which we'll talk about at the end of the episode, but I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. So, that's the finished object. And, but wait, there's one more. Yes, yes, not finished object. This one is a new cast on, um, which I needed to cast on something yesterday because I was going out for the evening and I needed knitting to bring with me. I just finished the second sock yesterday on the way out. Um, fortunately, I wasn't driving, so it was nice for a change that I got to um, sort of do a little bit of fast, quick, you know, toe action on that. So I finished it up, Kitchenered the toe, done. But I needed something else. So I cast on yesterday for a new project. It's in my fringe bag, of course, because I need to have yellow things in my gray bag because I own all the Grello. And um, this one is in Brooklyn Tweed Loft, which I picked up last weekend. This is the Hayloft colorway, and I have cast on for the Halo shawl. This is a pie shawl by Jared Flood, and I have not woven in the middle yet, but I will. Um, the Halo uh, shawl is a very, very, very simple pie shawl by um, Jared Flood. Um, the cast on is pretty easy. I've been using Magic Loop up to this point. By the time I do the next increase round, it will be big enough that I, will, I won't be Magic Looping. I'll just be knitting in the round now. Um, but I'm going to just give you a close up of some of the texture. Oh, so, of course, the needle is going to flip on me. There we go. Um, I have already made a couple of boo boos. I missed out on some of the the, um, the count on it. I don't care. Can you see where there's a boo-boo in the eyelet round? I can't. So who cares, right? As Shannon from Soxetter would say, F it, it's fine. It is fine. Um, the nice thing about this is you get a lot of rest rows where it's just pure stockinette. It's just knit, knit, knit. Um, and the lacy eyelet part and the pie increases are really straightforward. Um, it's SSK's double yarn overs, knit two togethers. Easy. Um, and I literally cast this on at noon yesterday. It's now one o'clock and I did this yesterday. Now I know that it increases exponentially, blah, 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 but I'm, I'm really enjoying this and I needed something because the new season of Sense8, my favorite series on Netflix forever, just came out with this season two. And would that make it sense 16? 
Anyway, stupid joke. Um, so I needed something to knit on while I'm watching that, something when I'm being social, something I can take out with me, and this is actually very, very straightforward to do. Um, it's not like knitting on my leaves of grass, which social knitting, pie shawl with a lot of lace, not a good idea. This one, totally fine. Anybody can do it, I promise you. So that's the new cast on. <sighs> there you go, guys. So that's it for current projects that I can talk about. I do have one other test knit that I'm doing, but I can't talk about it right yet. Um, but I will eventually. So let's take a quick little break and I'm going to come back and what are we talking about next? We're talking about Knitter's World. And welcome back. And now we're going to talk about some Knitter's World stuff. So uh, I've been gone for quite a while, but I wanted to catch you up on what I've been up to and where I've been and what I've been doing. Um, the weekend before I left on holiday, I actually was in Boston with uh, my partner Sebastian and Devin and Jenny, where we did the photo shoot for the second issue of Rib Magazine. Um, it was an amazing, amazing shoot. It, we, did, we shot on set as opposed to um, on location. The models were amazing. Um, Paula and Liz, who are our stylists, were just fantastic to work with. Everything worked out the way we wanted it to, so it was just, it was an amazing, amazing weekend. A um, lot of work, but it paid off. So we're thrilled with the results of it. Um, so that was Boston. The following, I guess it was almost like two, three days later, we left on our uh, Middle East cruise. So Sebastian and I went to Dubai. We were in Dubai for about four or five days uh, before we jumped on a cruise ship. And that cruise ship took us through the Middle East um, and into Europe. So we went from Dubai to Oman, went from Oman to Jordan, where I got to see um, the cliffs at Petra, which has been on my bucket list forever. Um, amazing place. Um, and then we went through um, the Suez Canal through Egypt, which, to be honest, I wasn't very thrilled with how it was just a weather related thing. We didn't get to see anything because it's the end of their dust storm season and there were dust storms going on, so you couldn't see anything. You went outside and you were just covered in dust in no time. Um, so that we went through that, and then we went to Israel, we went to um, Jerusalem, and we went to uh, a couple of places in north, uh, in Haifa, which is another port in Israel. Um, then we went through to Greece, and we were in Athens on Easter Sunday when everything was closed and the city was dead quiet, uh, which was interesting. <laughs> But it was fun. We'll go back. We'll go back. Uh, and then we sailed up to Venice where uh, we jumped off the ship and we were st we stayed in Venice for a couple of days. And uh, it was amazing. Venice was absolutely stunning. Um, the whole trip was fantastic. Um, it was what was, I think, probably one of the highlights, uh, obviously Venice, um, Petra, that sort of thing. But one of the biggest highlights for me were getting to meet some amazing people. Um, including a group on the ship that um, one of the crew's crew put together um, that I, I think it was called the Knit, Needle, and Hook Society, something like that. I can't remember. I just called it the Stitch Society because we were all a bunch of stitchers. Um, every day from 3 till about 4.30 or so, we'd get together and there were people cross-stitching and crocheting and I was knitting um, there's a woman working with um, silk velvet making this sort of um, textured um, beaded thing, which was brilliant. Um, there's a woman doing Hardinger, which I had never seen before, which was great. Um, to sort of see all this different cool stuff. Um, English paper piecing, which is going to be, I think, my new thing. I definitely want to try that. So that's going to be a new thing to add to my, my list of things to do. Um, and it was great. So I was knitting on the Fickle Step socks, which I already just showed you, and I just loved working on it. It was just, it was such a great break in the day to get together and focus on crafting and, and making. So, so that was totally fun. Um, Venice, I stopped in at only one yarn shop. So the entire trip, I stopped at one yarn shop, which was Lella Bella in Venice. And I did pick up something that I'll show you off. Uh, I'll show you in the haul, I'll show off, and I will show this one off because I think it's one of the most expensive skeins of yarn, single skeins I have ever bought. So um, it was worth it, but oh boy, it was a pricey one. Um, so that was the trip to Venice, then we flew home, so we've been home for a little while, but uh, no sooner am I home, but then uh, last weekend was the Toronto Knitters Guild Spring Knitters Frolic and Social. 
So the Nerdist Frolic is kind of like a mini Vogue or Stitches, you know, that sort of thing, where there's a lot of vendors and there's classes and that sort of thing. So I did pick up a few things along the way, um, which I'm very, very pleased with. And they're sitting here to my right, which is why I'm looking at them, because I love them. Um, and then the following day, that was Saturday, and then on Sunday, there was the social, which was kind of um, a catered afternoon lunch with, um, there's a fashion show, and Sally Melville was one of the speakers and gave a really, really good overview of sort of the the, the past of knitting in Canada. And then um, Stephanie Pearl McPhee did sort of a view to the future, uh, which was lovely. She was absolutely amazing. So they, they both were. And then there was, like I said, a fashion show, and um, it was really cool. And it was great because the whole weekend, um, Shamika from Brooklyn came in for it, and Brent from Prince George, who's uh, a friend of mine and who I met through Shannon of Soc Cetera. Um, and uh, Selma from Two Tangled Stain Skeins came in. Two Tangled Stains. Two Tangled Skeins. That's a tongue twister. Uh, flew in from Ottawa. And uh, so it was great. It was good to see. And then, of course, all my Toronto knitter friends were here. Uh, except poor Amanda, who is still recovering from surgery from um, the Die Another Day podcast. So um, Christina came and we sort of hung out with her. So it was good. It was a, it was great um, to see everybody. Um, so that was the Knitter's Frolic and Social. And then last night, there was another event, if you can imagine. Um, Lisa Much, who was the dyer at Northbound Knitting, had her, hopefully what will become more frequent, um, knit night at her um, dyeing studio in Barrie, uh, which is, mm, it's not close. I feel like I've got a little fluff here. There, got it. Um, it's not close. It, it takes a while to get there, but it's okay. It's like, it's highway driving. It's no big deal. So, uh, I went up with a couple of friends from the city, Ramona and Ashley and Patricia, and we hung out and we knit and we went to True North, um, knitting, which is a True North yarn, True North knitting in Barrie, which is a yarn shop. I didn't buy anything because I knew I'd already, I'd already bought enough lately. Um, but the girls picked up some stuff and then we went to Lisa's and, we sit and we had wine and we obviously bought a couple of things because Lisa's a dyer and you want your yarn when you see it. Um, and then we got home kind of late last night and I was up far, far, far too late watching more episodes of Sense8, which in season two I'm calling Sense16. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help it. It's kind of stupid. Um, so it was fun. It was great. It was a great, um, gosh, it feels like forever. It's been, what, six weeks since I've been away. And it's been an amazing time away. It's been so much fun. It's been so great to meet so many of you who watch the podcast and, and, and so many people who have said now that they're going to start watching. So hopefully you are. And if you are, welcome. Um, so yeah, so that's been the Knitter's World. It's been a busy, busy, busy six weeks. Yeah, it's been six weeks. Um, so Let's clear the decks again, and let's come back and talk about the haul. Okay, so if you stuck through to this point, you're probably stuck around waiting for the haul. So hopefully I shall not disappoint. Um, so I've got a whole bunch of stuff to show you, but I'm going to start with, first of all, something I picked up in Boston, which is um, Jameson's Shetland Spindrift. Um, and I picked this up to do another Busta beanie for my mother-in-law. I mentioned that a little bit earlier. So that will be the background color and these will be the two accent colors. Um, Sebastian picked out the colors for her so I can continue to practice my color work. Um, I had bought the Craftsy class quite a while ago on learning how to knit Continental. So I'm going to practice some of that first and then I'm going to try and do this one holding yarns in both hands. So I'm an English um, flicker as my preferred style of knitting. But if I can start to learn to pick with the left hand and flick with the right, color work, bing bing, should be fast. So that's in theory, we'll see how that goes. I'll report back. So that's the, um, that will go for the Busta Beanie. Remember, project specific purchasing is what I'm trying to do. It doesn't always pan out, but it's what I'm trying to do. So, um, I'm going to completely tell you that that said, um, the stuff that I bought at the Frolic had absolutely no purpose behind it whatsoever, but you'll, well, one does. So I picked up this skein of Red Sock, Blue Sock, Sock Adventures. This is in the Tide Pool and Chartreuse colorways. 
Ugh. Love it. Love these colors. Um, so if you have seen on their website or anything, or usually what they do is they sell their yarns um, as they were wound for dyeing, not reskained. This one happens to be reskained. Um, and when you see them when they're not, uh, I'm trying to find an example of one that hasn't been reskained. I don't have anything in front of me. But that's when you see like the big chunks of color and you can sort of see how it was dyed. Um, when it's been reskained, you get to see sort of how it's going to blend out when you actually make the project. And I saw this, I actually had originally picked this up in the not reskained version and loved it. And then I saw the reskained version and I thought I have to have it. So different strokes for different folks. For me, that pulled the trigger for me. So I loved it. Love it. And I can't wait to work with this. This will be socks. Then I also picked up, and this was probably one of the hardest um, booths to get stuff. This was also at the Toronto Knitters Frolic, was the Lichen and Lace um, booth. They are a Ontario-based um, dyer, I believe. I'll have to look that up to confirm. Um, oh, no, sorry, New Brunswick. My bad. Sackville, New Brunswick. Um, this is one of the nicest, I think, Canadian brands of yarn. If you're looking for something Canadian, if you're traveling this summer and you're going to be around in any of our yarn shops, keep an eye out for Lichen and Lace. This is their matte sock. This is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 400 yards. Perfect for socks, right? This colorway is called Shroom. It's got some browns and obviously some golds. And take a look at those. Hopefully that will focus relative. There we go. No, kind of, maybe. Anyway, love this color. Um, Brent and I, when we were walking around the Frolic, both picked up the exact same skein. So, you know, sock twinsies, I guess, if we're going to make socks out of these. I think I might actually, because I love these colors and I would like socks like that. But I'll probably just do vanilla for those because I need a good vanilla sock to just work on. So I also picked up the ever so popular Fool's Gold sock yarn from Hedgehog whilst I was there. Um, what to say? It's a great color. It may go into my fade. I am still thinking about doing one. I have all the colors I could possibly need. I just have to go stash diving and I'm sure I could pull out a fade pretty, pretty easily. But I don't want to start thinking about it yet because I've got so many other projects I want to finish. I've got to get my, my Rhinebeck sweaters done. I still have to finish Sebast Sebastian's sweater, which is kind of sitting in a bag and uh, it, that stresses me out, that one. It's a long story. When I fix it, I'll tell you why. Anyway, um, love this. Love the speckles. Uh, I don't care about speckles so much typically because it's not really my thing, but uh, the gold and the yellows in here are my thing. So, got that. What else did I get? Oh, I'm reaching. So, moving on from the frolic to pre-frolic activities. So, Shamika um, from Knit Night with uh, Mika Mika, um, podcast came up for the um, Nerdist Frolic as well. And when she had heard that I lost a couple of pairs of socks in the bag of, of laundry that I'd forgotten on the train in Amsterdam, included my trench coat colorway from Turtle Pearl, she took it upon herself to bring me a new pair. And it literally stung my eyes and brought tears to them because that was one of the nicest things I think anybody's done. And I loved these socks so hard. I can't even tell you, like, so hard I loved these. And I can't thank you enough, Shamika, for making my day and bringing me a new pair. So I will be getting on those because, you know, I still have 12 pairs to do this year. <laughs> I've got to keep going on those. So thank you so much, Shamika, for that. Um, and then Ramona, whilst I was away, um, Christina, who is the cozy knitter, uh, was vending at the Toronto Knitters Guild. Um, and because I was away, I did not get to participate. But Christina brought her ever so popular gingerbread house colorway with her, which comes, of course, with um, matching sock heel, sort of heel toes cuff set. Um, I love this. It's her 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. Uh, it's 420 yards, including the mini. So um, that's going to be my Christmas socks, I think. I have quite a few things to do for Christmas socks, so I've got to get going. Um, but thank you, Ramona, for picking that up for me so that I didn't miss out while I was away. 
All right, so I have two more things and I'm gonna talk about what I picked up in Italy. So um, Grace, who is wonderful, she's from the uh, One More Row podcast. Um, we hung out when, we, when I was in Edinburgh and there was one colorway uh, for my vest, sweater vest that I wanna do from um, Isolde that I'd bought all the yarn for. Um, but I was missing one, and I was a bit frustrated because getting Jameson and Smith here is a bit more of a challenge than it is in, in England. She went and picked out, I should put these together actually so you can sort of see them better, two colors for me and sent them that she thought would be pretty well equivalent because apparently that color is really hard to find that I wanted. So um, one of these absolutely is going to work. And no word of a lie, I think... I could probably get away with another hat. Like, what do you think? This would be a really nice sort of hat. Anyway, I'm I'm addicted, clearly, to Shetland wool. Uh, if you watched my last episode when I had it all with me, I think I was high off the fumes because I am in love with Shetland. So I need to go there. I absolutely need to go there someday. Okay, so one more, two more skeins to go through and that's it for the haul, I promise. Um, so last night at Northbound Knitting, um, Lisa put out quite the spread of food and, and beverage. And uh, if you follow a couple of people who were there on Instagram, you will see sort of how we were set up. It was lovely. And of course, she was selling her ever so famous metallurgy, which apparently some people say metallurgy, but I say metallurgy. Um, and this is her 100% superwash BFL fingering which again, I am such a fan of BFL. I, I love it for socks. This may be socks, it may go into a fade, it may go into a different project, don't know, don't care. Um, I need to have it. So it's now in my stash. And last, but very much not the least, I did pick up uh, one skein when I was in Italy. And this one, I feel like is almost gonna be the family pet because it's so soft and it's so delightful. And it is the Soft Cashmere for Lella Bella in color M3 from Venice. It is almost, I, well, it's a lace weight. There's no two ways about it. Um, it is 100% cashmere. It is 50 grams. All of this is 50 grams. This is, this is 50 grams of Shetland. This is 50 grams of cashmere. Um, oh, I just love it. I want a beard made out of this. I could be like the Cashmere Gandalf. That's what I'll be. Ooh, maybe that's the title, the Cashmere Gandalf. Anyway, um, it is 770 yards. So divide that by two is 385 yards if held double. So I'm kind of thinking that I might have to make a project like a really wonderful hat or a cowl or something because this is so next to skin, skin soft that oh i just love it but for now i think it might be the family pet we don't have cats or dogs but i have a skein of cashmere oh that's also a fun title maybe we'll go with that i don't know anyway it's lovely the store is tiny it's beautiful venice is very 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 tiny as a city so you can walk everywhere no matter where you are in venice you can walk to this shop um, we did, it took three tries to get in to see it. The first try they were closed for coffee break. Um, the second try they were closed for lunch. Third time was the charm. We finally got in and got to see them. And between my non-existent Italian and the owner and shop assistant's very, very, um, minimal English, which is fine. I'm traveling. I'm not expecting them to speak English. Um, I sort of haven't had a nice little combo with her. So that is, that's the new family pet. There you go. So that's it for the haul, guys. I think that's enough for now. I really have to put myself on a yarn diet between EYF, um, this cashmere, just for price point reference. This is not a matter of bragging. This is nothing. This is, there's a reason why I only bought one. Um, this was 40 euro. 40 euro is, in Canadian dollars, is almost $60 for one skein for 50 grams. I know I can get it cheaper, but you can get Venetian cashmere for cheaper. So anyway, just for reference, if anyone's curious, this is the last thing I bought in Venice because as you can see here, 
that is uh, Murano glass that we did buy a set of tumblers and that broke the budget right there. So there was only money left for one. Glass, yarn, glass, yarn, glass, glass one. So that's that for the haul. Let's come back and talk about just one more thing. Okay, so this is just the one more thing and I'm not gonna spend a huge amount of time on this because um, I try and keep a little separation between, you know, sort of church and state, between podcast and business. But I do feel like I want to share um, some of the work that we've been doing on Rib Magazine uh, for a couple of reasons. One, we've heard so much great feedback from so many of you about what you liked about um, issue one. And issue two is now available for pre-order. Uh, we should have a firm shipping date by the end of the week. I'm really, really hoping so. It is at the printers now. It's just a matter of time. Uh, the patterns in it, guys, there's four garment patterns and four accessories. I kind of want to make everything in there. I've already made the socks, so I can start adding other things to my list. Um, the sweaters are gorgeous. The, um, the fingerless mitts are great. The direction mitts. There's a beautiful hat. I think the next project I'll probably cast on myself is the River Rock Scarf, which is a two-color brioche scarf, which is just uh, amazing. So anyway, I just wanted to put a little shout out for um, thank you to everybody who worked on the magazine. Thank you to everybody who submitted their designs. Whether they were accepted or not isn't really the point. The fact is that uh, we so appreciate everyone putting in the time to, to do that. We are currently planning on issue three. It's in the works at the moment, which again, we're super excited about. Issue four is starting to sort of take a little bit of shape, which is fantastic too. Guys, couldn't thank you enough for everyone who's placed an order. If you haven't already, please check it out at ribmag.com. If you did not get a copy of the first issue, there are extremely limited quantities. Like I'm talking this many left to order. Uh, if you do want one and haven't got one already, you can order it online as well, and that one we can ship straight away. Anyway, I wanted to just again say thank you to everybody who participated, to everyone who ordered, for everyone who's worked on projects um, from the magazine. It's just been tremendous, tremendous support for a new venture, and uh, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you, and we hope you like issue two. So that's it for this episode. I'll be back in probably about two weeks with another episode where we will hopefully see some progress on the Radmere. That's what I'm planning to work on. Um, the Halo Shawl probably will be, if not done, it'll be pretty close to being done because it's moving lightning fast. Um, so that'll be on the go. I'm going to have, I think I'm going to cast on another pair of socks. I've got a test knit I have to finish first. Um, but that one I actually have to think through. That one's not a, a simple vanilla, but I feel like I need a simple vanilla on the needles too. Um, I'm not traveling for a little while, which is kind of nice, probably to the beginning of June. Um, but then who knows? We'll see. You never know with me. I could end up someplace near you. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, thanks again for joining me. And uh, if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, please do. You can follow us on Instagram, on Ravelry. There's a wonderful group there. And uh, all the information will follow right after this. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you soon.